My name is Fred Cohen. I'm a medical physician. I practice oncology medicine. That's cancer medicine. I'm 90 years old and I am a South Orange senior. Philadelphia was very pleasant. Uh, I didn't know we were poor, but we were poor, or at least my father didn't have a job for a while. But uh, it was, we lived in various different neighborhoods in Philadelphia, and it was a good city to live in. I ended up going to one of the Central High School, which was the academic high school in Philadelphia. I don't know why, I was one of the few in my junior high school class that decided that I should be an academic. I wasn't that great a student because it was, everything was easy for me in school. So, but I went to Central High School in Philadelphia, which was a terrific school. And then we moved, when the war started, we moved up here to Maplewood. My parents were terrific and, and we were always, they were pretty happy. They fought sometimes, parents, parents do, but we, I was pretty happy, had lots of friends. And the schools I went to were good, mostly Jewish people that I was associated with until I went to high school. Then it was a big city high school. But uh, I was comfortable in the neighborhood, lots of friends, lots of things to do. And uh, I was never unhappy or felt that there was lots of problems, although apparently there were. But I wasn't, my parents didn't make me aware of them or, I, or maybe I just ignored them. But I was a happy guy. My career at that age when, when I started school was the war. The war was on, so I didn't think that there was anything important except going into service. I happened, to, because I was born in Philadelphia, I was a year ahead of most of the kids that were in Columbia High School when I came here. So that most of the guys in my class, by June of 1944, they were in the service already, and I wasn't. I wasn't 18 yet. And so they said, you have to go to college. So. I didn't, what's his, I didn't know what it was to go to really, what it meant to go to college. As a matter of fact, uh, I, was, uh, I, I, was, I applied to two colleges at that time. University of Pennsylvania, I knew about, and Princeton. That's all I knew about. And both places I got refused by return mail. And in those days, they were looking for civilians to go to college, but they didn't want me. <laughs> so I went up to, a, we went to a Ryder, Ryder not Ryder, no, uh, in Drew, Drew. I went to Drew College and I had an interview and the, uh, the guy said, uh, well, w you look like you'll be accepted here, but you have to write an essay about your life. I said, I don't write essays. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't like to write essays. He said, well, you can't come to this college unless you write an essay. So I said, so I won't go to this college. And I walked out and I, my father was waiting outside. I said, they don't want me in this college. So finally, we heard about Rutgers University. And one on a, early in June, just about to graduate from high school, my father and I and another friend, Buddy Kreitzberg, uh, we went down to Rutgers and we, my father went in. I stayed outside. He went in and started talking to the uh, director of admissions. And the next thing I went in and, and, oh, what happened was my father went in and he said, I want my son to come to this college. Where is he going to sleep when he comes to this college? And the guy started to laugh. And the next thing you know, I was at Rutgers University. And then that was in June, and then by the fall, I had to go into, I went and served, volunteered for the Navy, and I went into service. And then when I came back a couple of years later, I went back to Rutgers and then really knew what it was to be a student. And from then on, I didn't get anything but A's from then on, so I did well. But prior to that in high school, there was nothing to it. I just, just went by, got by. And my father was a salesman. He was a great salesman, yes. And that was the story. He said, when walked right in, so he said, where's my kid going to sleep when he comes to this college? Not are you going to accept him or not. It was automatic. And so I went to Rutgers. In my class, there were 72 people. 65 were Jewish. They were, we were all guys who came from this area, went to Rutgers or NYU or University of Pennsylvania, couldn't get into medical school for whatever reason. I was always told that the reason I couldn't get into medical school, most of the schools I applied to at that time was because I was Jewish. As a matter of fact, one of the medical schools told me I should change my name and maybe they would accept me. But anyhow, Chicago Medical School accepted a, lo a lot of Jewish kids. And so I went there to Chicago Medical School, which was an excellent school. I took a train out to Chicago on a Saturday morning, went for the went to, my father was well known at the Palmer House Hotel, which is a hotel in Chicago, 
because he was a traveling man. And I went there and they let me take a shower and shave. And then I went for my interview. I went for the interview and it was a terrible interview. I mean, first of all, they start talking about wars and about what do you think? Uh, I remember a, 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 the, an American plane shot down a Russian plane over uh, Germany in those days. It's a long time ago. And uh, there was a big excitement about it. And the guy said, what do you think? Do you think the United States really told the truth that they didn't have an I said, yes, I think they told the truth. He said, would you believe any? I said, I believe anything you say. <laughs> Just let me get into this medical school. And the next thing I know, I went home that day. And I came home, and two days later, I got a letter I was accepted to medical school. I have no idea why. But I went out to Chicago, and it was a great, great school. We met at a wedding at a, of a mutual friend. Marjorie was going to NYU, and she had a, a classmate at NYU who went to France to study. Uh, she was studying foreign language, and she ultimately became a very well-known high school teacher in New Jersey in foreign languages. But anyhow, Arlene was in, in France, and uh, Margie was a bridesmaid, and I was an usher at her wedding. She came home with this guy from France, who she was going to, he was an Israeli, who she was going to marry. They didn't have, he had no friends, and in those days, if you were Jewish and you lived in this area, you had to get married at the Essex House Hotel, and you had to have five ushers and three bridesmaids and all that business, and the they didn't know any, the, 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 of course the groom, the potential groom didn't know anybody. So they asked friends of, of, the, of the bride's brother and I was asked to be an usher and Margie was a bridesmaid and we walked down the aisle together. And uh, at the end, uh, after the wedding, we drove the couple to their honeymoon in, in the Pierre Hotel in New York and we became acquainted. I didn't groom her to be a doctor either. She was going to Bryn Mawr and uh, all of a sudden she announced that she wanted to go to medical school. I don't think we ever talked about it. We ever encouraged her. As a matter of fact, I told my two sons, younger sons, don't be a doctor. It's a tough life and don't be a doctor. And they, they weren't. But Alice decided that she wanted to go. She went to Bryn Mawr and she decided she wanted to go to medical school. I'm proud of all my kids. As a matter of fact, I have great kids. But uh, as far as Alice is concerned, she's a fantastic doctor, very well known internationally because she's a specialist in blood coagulation, clotting and things. And she's very well known. She's a great teacher and she's a great, the only person she hollers at is me in the hospital. I still go to the hospital twice a week at least to see patients. I was the first I'm really full-time oncologist here in the state of New Jersey. I started the first department in a, in a community hospital and it's never been hard for me. Sometimes it's disturbing and you know, it's not pleasant to see people die and many of the patients I take care of are dying from metastatic cancer. But it's been easy for me to do it. It's not comfortable sometimes, but I enjoy the practice per se. My wife says, I married you for better or for worse, but not for lunch, get out of the house. So when we get out of the house, I go to the hospital now since I retired. I used to go, of course, I was busy all the time and I was in oncology or cancer medicine most of my life. And one of the things about cancer medicine is because cancer involves every part of the human body, you have to know, as opposed to most doctors who specialize, a heart doctor knows only the heart, you know. I mean, he knows other things, of course, but as an oncologist, cancer can occur in every part of the body, from the small toe to the eyebrow, including every organ. So you have to know everything there is to know about internal medicine. And that's what I loved about it, that it was the science of it was so significant. So I never got tired of it. I get tired of going to work, but I never got tired of being an oncologist.